Ipso couldn't find a comfortable place to sit with his birth family. They were, for the most part, good, normal people of African descent who spent Sundays in church and workdays working. They reveled in purchasing things with the money they earned. He was trying to find his way on slopes of wet rocks. He had one brother with whom he could discuss the work of Miles Davis. But as soon as the conversation strayed, even to something as mild as how his brother's daughter was doing in school, the exchange became contentious. Ipso's regular days, to say nothing of his work days, were fraught. Words would rush to the front of his brain in the factory, and the work seemed two or three times more difficult than it should have been, or than it was, or than it was for the other people that he worked with, or all three, which seemed a fourth possibility. There were, to his mind, very few people who could do factory work and something else and do either thing well. There was a person back in the 20th century who had made it to the Detroit City Council after attaining a law degree while working in the factory and, based on the interviews Ipso read, this person, Ken Cockrell Sr., had two brains. One brain coped with the factory while the other consumed law books. Ipso, on the other hand, was only able to string together a few words and he left them in his mind as they seemed to need to germinate. <clears throat> Monkeys with torches and hand grenades riding pigs into hell seeking the enemy among them. Monkeys with reins between their teeth and torches and grenades in either hand, some with saddles, some without, some with letters from home attesting to bloodlines, records that may be lost forever in the battle to come. And who will know among them who is the writer, or the enemy, or one in the same? These words came to Ipso one stormy Monday night and festered in him deep into Saturday sleep. He tossed and turned, rolled and tumbled, wondering how to make things fit. How to get those pigs into that narrowing space. How could the monkeys be the riders as pigs were probably smarter than monkeys and therefore would have to be the riders, even though the idea of pigs riding monkeys was laden with logistical challenges. The riders would have to be chimpanzees or at least carnivorous humans. Ipso was a carnivore himself and admired vegetarians. There were a few vegetarians in the factory and they seemed calmer and listen to the news on stations where everyone seemed calm and smart. He thought vegetarians were smarter than he, and he so wanted to be smarter than he. All the great writers from Harriet Tubman to Catherine Dunham, from Charles Burnett to Fannie Lou Hamer, had all been smarter than he was, or seemed so at very least. Their work rose to the high stage, where it could work the brain stem, spinal cords, respiratory and nervous systems of large numbers of people came down like invisible rain to be carried by media irrigation systems to the dry places until there were very few towns where their work hadn't bloomed. Fewer still where some derivation of their plants had not sprung up. People ate the plants without knowing where they came from and their bodies didn't care and the children they birthed with the nourishment from the plants that fused the egg and seed didn't care. Some reached back to find the source of what they had eaten and drew richness from the journey, even if they had died before finding the root of the root. Others just grew.